Our first speaker is Brian Gonzalez, the Director of Global Programs, and he will be speaking about the future of global programs here at EPREP. Um, my name is Brian Gonzalez, and I've been at UPREP for exactly 201 days. Um, 201 days ago, I didn't know anyone's name, I didn't know who was going on Global Link, and I didn't understand blue days, white days, green days, flex days, late start flex days, or any sort of other days that we have here at UPREP. But 200 day, 201 days before that, I had never heard of UPREP. I was living in Austin, Texas, and I had no intentions of moving to Seattle. And 201 days before that, I was teaching summer school at the University of Texas, a course of sport and philosophy, where I managed to use the Muppet Show to teach the fundamentals of phenomenology. Phenomena, do do. <laughs> so to ask like where Global Programs is going after I've been here 201 days is sort of a hilarious challenge when 402 days ago, I didn't know where I was or where I was going, so much less where we're going for Global Programs. But I'll start with this. In 201 days from right now, 23 of the 33 people going on Global Link this year will no longer be on this campus. I should get a click. So we start very first with one key word, proximity. If we're going to consider the future of global programs at this school, we need to consider where we are right now and what we see every day. So a couple of facts. This is our 11th year to go to Samoa. After this year, we, have, we will have sent 93 students to Samoa. We have sent 17 trip leaders to Samoa. 12 of those trip leaders are still here at this school. So when I ask myself about a decade of Samoa, I look around this campus and I wonder, where is the legacy? Where do we see 10 years of Samoa at this school? Where do we see the images, the stories? How is it ingrained in our institution? How has 10 years of going to Samoa changed this campus? and I don't see a whole lot. We have this massive, massive institutional memory just on Samoa, and we need to be better at sharing that history and sharing those experiences. I asked this year's Global Link class, where have you been before? Before we travel, where have you been? And I was surprised to see that uh, collectively, this group has traveled to 62 different countries in 49 of the 50 states in America, but not Mississippi. And that's not even including our staff. If you remember some of the boards that we saw during one of our events, it got competitive between our teachers and our staff as to where have you been? Hundreds and hundreds of countries visited, but not Mississippi. So maybe we need to consider Global Link Deep South. And maybe we need to ask the question that if the point is cultural immersion, if the point is putting our students and our staff in new places, do we really need to fly to Lithuania to do that? Can we not fly to Mississippi? Can we not go to Eastern Washington? Can we not go 15 minutes down the road? Surprising fact, almost half of our graduating class will go on Global Link before they leave this campus. Across the five years, that's the average. And ask ourselves, is that where we want to be? Is that good enough? Is that surprising? Is that more than you thought? And so we ask this big question, do we want to get to a place where 100% of a graduating class has gone on a global link experience or has had a global travel experience. But asking that question and thinking about that would change everything we know about global link. How much money we put into it, how many resources we put into it, the scheduling of that, the spring break trips, everything is blown up when we consider is it going to be 100%? And should it be 100%? But that's the future of the question is, is half the graduating class enough? This year's class, we're at 41 point. 44.16%. Um, three went as sophomores, eight went as juniors, and 23 are going as seniors. And across the lines, we looked at the data and it said that's pretty much how it goes. A handful of sophomores turns into two handfuls of juniors, which turns into, oh my god, graduating now when I go on global link. This year we have one sophomore going. So it's all on the list of units to recruit two handfuls of juniors next year and then make sure that 20 something seniors go in two years' time. But we do need to ask this question. What is the right dispersal of grade levels for Global Link? Is it really a 12th grade experience? Or is it a 10th grade experience? Or is it everything in between? And how do we answer these questions as to what the four years are like for our upper school seniors, or upper school class? This is actually the title of the document that you have to sign on Global Link now. I'll give you a moment. It's the entire 
Sorry about that. Brevity is dead, obviously. <laughs> this document, the waiver, the days of the one page waiver are done. Our identification of Covenant Not to Sue is now nine pages long, and it lists over 40 risks associated with Bubble Link, and it always ends with, but not limited to. So we ask this question what is going on in the world? The days of just getting on a plane and going on a school trip are done. Then people start to ask questions of us. Is the world becoming too dangerous? Is it becoming more dangerous? And what we think is that it's not becoming more dangerous, it's just the danger has now dissipated to every corner of the globe. Just as the world has become more interconnected, so has danger, so have the risk. They simply don't care about national boundaries any longer. Everywhere you go, there's now risk. But, do the risk outweigh the values? Is there ever going to be a point where taking kids, taking trips around the world is going to be too risky and not valuable enough for this school? It's a legitimate question, but we have one, a one word answer. It is about proximity. You cannot experience the world always online and in virtual reality. You literally have to have the world presented in front of you and you must confront the world. When things change, it's when you smell something different, when you taste something different, when you meet new people, when you experience different places. That's the value. And no matter how dangerous the world may get, and how risky it may become, and whether or not it's 50% of our graduating class, or 100% of our graduating class, the value of our global programs is fundamentally about the relationships in other places. That may mean Mississippi. That may mean Lithuania. That may mean Nepal. But proximity. If you want to change the world, you have to be proximate to it. And it also means the future of global programs is going to start by here. It has to start here. We have to bring it back better. We have to bring it back louder. And we have to build relationships outside of the school. There's really no point in traveling around the world if we don't engage the world here in Seattle. So I'll close with the Samoa piece. Ten years of Samoa. And I've asked around and thought, do we have a relationship with the Samoan community here in Seattle? Not yet. But I think that's going to be the future of global programs. That if we consider to go to Nepal, to Botswana, to Lithuania, in 10 years from now, in 40 years from now, we want to have dynamic relationships and we want to send every student that we can, in some way or another, to face the world differently. And I think that's going to be the future. Thank you very much.